So hello everyone. We'll be starting the session. Uh, before presenting Tom, I'd like to make some comments. Um, this uh, presentation will be recorded. So if you want, if you don't want to be out of the recording, you can uh, turn off your camera. And uh, there will be some Q and A session after the presentations. You can write your questions during the presentation in the chat room and we'll read them at the end. So, hello everyone. My name is Esteban. I'm part of the Open edX community. And today, um, we're gonna have Tom Di Pietro Polo, from Brit Speaker, uh, doing his presentation. Ensuring that content is accessible and engage engaging, it's a key component of an inclusive education and text to speak is a powerful tool to support this. We will see how SB Learning leverages the Read Speaker text to speech plugin in the open edX environment to drive engagement. The Read Speaker team will discuss, will discuss how to easily integrate and use text to speech as well as a demo that for the Read Speaker suite of audio enhanced learning tools that are an invaluable support for a diverse population of learners. And as stated before, there will be a Q&A session at the end. Tom, uh, welcome to the OpenEdX uh, Meetup, and please go ahead with your presentation. Great, uh, good day. So hopefully everyone, uh, I have my headset microphone on, I see there's a couple of comments about an echo. So I just wanna confirm that when I'm speaking, is, has the echo gone away? Okay, yeah, it might be just be the need for the headset, so great. So hopefully, just to confirm, my presentation should be up on the screen, so you should be seeing the, the open edX uh, welcome window, and we'll get started. So background uh, for, for me that I'll be speaking to you today. So I've been at Reed Speaker about uh, four years now, Prior to that, I was at Blackboard, the LMS company, uh, in a business development role for several years. Uh, and before that, I was at McGraw-Hill in the education publishing business uh, for 10 plus years. So my background has always been in education content, ed tech, uh, and uh, learning. You know, And when I got started in the business, online learning was just starting uh, to kick off. And I've been able to participate in the journey from, you know, what is this online learning to now, you know, online learning is almost leading the pack. So I put my LinkedIn in the chat, happy to connect with anyone to uh, always have a conversation around ed tech. It's something that I'm passionate about and that I really enjoy. So read speaker background on us uh, very quickly. So we have been in the text to speech business for over 20 years. Uh, we are focused solely on output, so solely on uh, text-to-speech, turning uh, words into audio. Uh, and depending on where you are in the world, most likely you have heard a read speaker voice, whether that be in bus transportation, uh, airport announcements, um, you know, number of libraries have us integrated into their systems. Uh, even the Library of Congress here in the U.S., where if you uh, wanted to listen to any of the bills that were proposed by the senators, they have our technology integrated so that you can listen to that content in addition to reading it. But our focus in the past few years has really changed as the technology has changed and we've moved towards DNN voices, deep neural network voices built with the assistance of AI that give us a more realistic sound and really promoting that text-to-speech audio um, in several different ways. Uh, you know, the education piece is what we're gonna talk about today, but we've also done work with Spotify, with Sonos and virtual assistants in making the world, you know, sound unique and really bringing brands uh, a voice. What we're gonna focus on today. So earlier this week, some of you may have seen, uh, there was a post that ReadSpeaker made on the Open edX site, uh, specific to you know what's called the curb cut method and how it applies to education content. 
if you aren't familiar with the curb cut effect, uh, it's when disability friendly features are, are being used and appreciated by a larger group than they were designed for. So you think of that as the curb cut where sidewalks were cut into so that wheelchairs would be able to access buildings and public space. With that, you have travelers lugging, uh, pulling luggage. You have strollers that are able to use that. And now it's become more of an accessibility feature and more of an all around uh, making things easier for, for people to walk and travel. Uh, the curb cut effect also applies for education. So when it comes to accessible content, we know that there's a benefit to those with disabilities, but it's also beneficial to all learners. So while some learners may prefer visuals, uh, others prefer hands-on, there's also those that benefit from an audio approach. And that's where Reed Speaker is bringing a piece of this uh, curb cut uh, approach. There's no single approach that works for everyone. We know that, that people benefit from a mix of several different learning methods. And you know our goal is to be just a piece of that puzzle to support educators, institutions in finding a way to get their message and their content across to students. In line with thinking of the curb cut effect uh, is UDL or universal designer learning. This is something Reed Speaker is a very strong proponent of. Uh, for, for those of you not familiar, UDL, a framework used to create flexible and inclusive learning environments uh, for, for students from all backgrounds. It's been shown that by using multiple methods of presentation, students better comprehend and retain information. So we again, we know that no two students learn the same way. And by following the UDL principles, we're able to reach students and help them retain and improve uh, their scores on assessments, improve their knowledge, and hopefully succeed towards the course completion that they're working on. When you combine those two methods and we think about using technology not to help certain students, but designing with UDL principles, now we're talking about bringing the benefits of ed tech to all students and allowing them to choose the learning path that's best for them. What we're going to show today is Reed Speaker's integrated text to speech learning tools that show give the students an opportunity to consume content in different ways, both visually, audio, uh, and, and com a combination of the two. So how do these all come together? So and who can benefit from integrated text to speech? You know, as we talked about the curb cut method, as we talked about UDL, um, you know, the, the goal is to give students different opportunities and to make it easier on the institution, the content company, uh, you know, to integrate, you know, a text to speech solution to allow students to listen to content. Reed Speaker believes strongly that any student can benefit from TTS, not just those with a visual impairment or a learning disability. However, it's important to keep in mind when we design our products, we are focused on meeting accessibility standards. So the tool I'm going to show you today, uh, WebReader, it is WCAG 2.1 AA compliant. Uh, you know, and our goal is not to, you know, be a barrier or, you know, slow down an institution or an organization's uh, commitment to accessibility, but to support them. So when our tool is integrated, uh, it is, you know, fully WCAG compliant and, you know, allows the student who does have a visual impairment to leverage the tool just like they would with their own screen reader. Today, I'm going to highlight uh, Read Speaker's web reader integration into the ESME learning platform. If you aren't familiar with ESME Learning Solutions, they are an organization that delivers online executive education uh, in partnership with leading universities across the globe. The uh, course we're going to demo today is from uh, their Oxford Learning um, integration. So when ESME was building their platform, they reached out to Read Speaker, where several of the executive team members we're familiar with our TTS solutions that are built into publisher platforms like McGraw-Hill, Cengage, uh, Houghton Mifflin. 
as well as learning management systems like Blackboard, Canvas, and D2L. So they were already familiar with our tool and they uh, reached out to bring ReadSpeaker into the ESME Learning, which is what introduced ReadSpeaker to the Open edX platform. The goal that ESME had was not just to bring TTS to their platform for accessibility, but given their diverse group of learners and the you know different jobs that they hold, you know they knew that audio was going to be a core component of their courses, so that students could learn while commuting, while on the bus, while taking a walk, and listen to content. You know, so that the course requirement wasn't that you had to be at a computer to review the content. There's a lot going on on this slide, but but I think it's important to give you a look at the web reader tool expanded before I go into the live demo. So when I started, Read Speaker is focused on output. We are focused on text to speech. We support over 50 languages. But what we heard from you know our customers you know years ago was that we need to make it easier. We need to take down the barriers to leveraging text to speech in an online learning environment. So the Read Speaker team developed Web Reader and our learning suite of education tools as a plug and play solution. So it's designed to be dropped into a learning environment. You know, we provide sample code with JavaScript. Um, so that this tool can be implemented very quickly into almost any learning platform. Then based on feedback, case studies, you know, we expanded on those tools and brought out things like the uh, click to listen so that you can hover over a specific paragraph and listen to just that key concept that you want to have re uh, repeated. Uh, text mode, uh, is one that hides all the images so that the user is focused just on the text of the page. Uh, download is MP3. If you're going to take the dog for a walk, you have the ability to download the content and listen to it offline. So these tools are all built out of case studies and customer feedback, and we're constantly enhancing and revising them. However, these aren't required. You don't have to use all of these. We've made it configurable so that you turn things on and off based on your UX, your UI, so that you control the uh, the presentation to the student. So you know we don't force this on you, but we've built these tools so that they can be customized to fit your learning environment. Again, the goal is to break down the barrier to make it easier to present. So with that, I'm going to go live into a course and click through a demo. And this is the point that you hope the password didn't change since you tested it yesterday. So when we come into their course, we are presented with their framework and their course framework. And what you can see is they've dropped in the listen button on the right hand side. This button's gonna sit dormant until the learner engages with it. And when that happens, the JavaScript is gonna be activated, the text is gonna be captured, sent to ReadSpeaker, and we stream back the audio in real time. So we're not pre-processing, we're not handling any uh, MP3 files, so that when course content is updated, if we're reading a discussion board, for example, you know, we're able to read dynamic content so I'm going to play a little bit and then I'll stop and I'll show some of the other features. But the idea is you can drop this into any course and right into the learning mode. 1.4.4 FinTech for the historically unbanked. FinTech in historically unbanked populations. The FinTech revolution has made a tremendous impact on efforts towards financial inclusion for those who previously had little or no access to financial services. So a couple of things you may have noticed. We don't read everything on the page. For example, we skipped the bookmark this page feature because that isn't part of the learning content. So part of the configuration is to say, what do you want? Uh, to be read by the read speaker service so that the learner can focus in on that specific content. If I minimize this bar, 
and we start to look at that feature set that I had blown out on the previous slide. First, we have reading language where as a learner, you can choose whether you want a female voice, a male voice, a different dialect, uh, you know, depending on the implementation. Then we have click to listen. When that is enabled, now when we go over a paragraph, not find the text to read. when we go over a paragraph and we select it, it's going to read specifically that paragraph to us. Again, giving the learner more control. The enlarged text feature, we have a number of implementations that are for libraries, uh, elderly and visually impaired. I like to call this the karaoke feature. So when we enable enlarged text. 1.4.4 FinTech. On the bottom of the screen, we're gonna call out the, the text and highlight it for the learner. 1.4.4 FinTech for the historically unbanked. As you can see, we provide the timing information, so we have that follow along highlighting. One of the strongest features in the web reader tool, I think is our text mode. And when I launch this, you'll see why. So we're gonna focus the learner's attention on the specific content. We're gonna give them the ability to zoom in and out. We're gonna give them the ability to change the font. For example, they can move it to the open dyslexic font. So based on the integration, because the text is being sent to our server, we can give them this pop-up window and give them the ability to interact with your content without making any changes in your platform, in your LMS, in the Open edX platform. This basically makes your content more interactive and it gives the learner uh, more control as well as reading speed. Some like fast, slow, medium, all these controls are, are at the learner's level. Page mask is one that does not involve text-to-speech. This was something that came out of one of our focus groups where someone said, sometimes I don't want the text-to-speech to be enabled, but I wanna have a focus tool. So I think a number of us have had, when we were learning to read, you know, the teacher would give a ruler out to some students and they would go line by line. It came up as a, a requested feature and, and we added it. So we're constantly listening to the customers to improve the content. The other thing that the learner can do is they can select a specific paragraph, a specific sentence, and then they're presented with options. Listen to that specific passage or they can translate. Now, this isn't localized, okay? We're not gonna localize the content. Depending on the location, we're going to do a machine translation. And that may be through um, Google's Translate feature. It may be through um, a couple other features that we use uh, in Europe uh, based on privacy requirements, GDPR, things like that. But this is going to be a machine, machine translation. So if we take this paragraph and move it into Swedish, You'll notice that it brings us up in text mode. So it remembered that I was looking at the open dyslexic font and it's translated that content for me. And now when I hit play, 1,2 miljarder vuxna har skaffat ett konto sedan 2011. We're now going to read that content in a native voice to the learner. So to go over that one more time, and just so you can see the list of those languages, we select the content, we choose translate, and we're given a menu that we can now translate the learning content. If I'm in English as a second language student, I can translate it into my uh, native language. Again, machine translation. I think it's important that there's a core difference between localization and machine translation. Uh, machine translation is getting very, uh, very good. It, you know, it is it is improving almost every day. Uh, but key difference between localizing content and translating content. But this allows the learner that you know view of the content in their own language, and then to listen to it with a native voice. This can also be disabled. So we have a number of implementations where the web reader feature is implemented in assessments, and 
if it is an English course, you know, you don't want them to have access to that translate button. So for that page or for that section of content, the translate tool is disabled. So again, these aren't required features. These are just the different features that are available to you. The last one I'll show you, if you highlight a specific word, you have the ability to go out to the dictionary. We're going to, it looks like we have to look into this one. This, we're gonna call out to the uh, Webster's um, Thesaurus API, and we're going to send back the dictionary um, feature, and we're gonna send back the definition and the ability to listen to it. So we built that into the tool. Uh, some schools disable that, again, because of assessments and things that they want them to work off of their glossary. They don't want them to use the Webster's Dictionary to look up different terms. So all things that are configurable inside the page. And the goal is for this listen button to follow the student wherever they go so that they don't have to worry about what browser am I in? You know, am I... You know, am I working from the Chrome browser where I have my extension installed? You know, am I working from my mobile phone? This feature is fully mobile compliant. So if the learner is on their mobile phone, they can hit play and have that content stream back to them. We present the toolbar a little bit differently just because of the, the, the area of the screen that's available. Um, but all those same features are available in the mobile environment. So the goal is simple. It is to make the content the audio version of that content accessible to students, whether they have a visual impairment or not. So in closing, you know, our, our goal is to provide a tool that's easy to implement that you can drop into the page and that's fully configurable, you know, to allow students a better chance of success, you know, where we immediately make that text-based content interactive and the students can choose how they want to listen to it, how they want to engage with it. And that that concludes the walkthrough in the, the ESME platform. You know, they have it built into their course modules, into their assessment platform, uh, so that the students can interact directly with it. Great. Thank you, Tom, for your presentation. Um, sorry if there's some echo in the background. I'm going to make it really quick. So we have some questions. Um, when, how many languages does the plugin support? So the the uh, the web reader tool supports uh, 52 languages uh, um, that, you know, we can read native content. OK, great. So. Uh, does this integration replace screen reader functionality? So I think that that's a key question. That's a really important one. Um, it does not. Um, it complements a student that has a screen reader. So if a student is visually impaired and they have um, a screen reader solution that you know they're going to be very familiar with, uh, you know, they they may continue to use that. The way we've built Web Reader is to give the student the ability to decide whether they want to use it or not. Uh, you know, because the, the screen reader is going to follow that student wherever they go. That, that application is for them to read, uh, you know, all web pages outside of the learning platform. However, you know, we, we didn't want to build a tool that would exclude screen readers. So when a student with a screen reader comes uh, and interacts with web reader, they're going to see that it supports keyboard controls uh, and it'll do you know, the functionality that their screen reader can do and they can choose. Do I want to have the web reader experience and listen to the read speaker voice or am I more familiar with my screen reader and that voice and really the learner gets to decide. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, we have one more question. What are the typical use cases for leveraging the read speaker plugin? So, <laughs> In, and specifically in the open edX platform, it you know it is for you know um, uh, creating an audio version of your content. You know for not just students with a disability, but also students with different learning styles. Um, outside of the open edX uh, open edX platform, you know the use cases really um, you know can be a number of things. You know it can be elderly population that are they're not 
visually impaired, but their vision is making it harder for them to read computer screens. Um, it's also can be used just because sometimes our eyes get tired. I, I recall in one of our focus groups um, talking with an honor student who said, I love Read Speaker. And I, I said, wait, you're you're an honor student. What you know, what what do you need Read Speaker for? And she said, when I when my eyes get tired, I'll turn on the audio and it'll keep me focused for another 30, 40 minutes of studying. So, you know, the, the impact is really beneficial when we talk to students. Okay, great. Another question we have, what are the machine translation tools that the web speaker, the web speaker, sorry, the read speaker leverage outside of Google Translate? So to be compliant with, um, I believe, uh, this the more of a technical question. So um, I'm, I'm gonna answer it to the best of my ability. I believe for us to be GDPR compliant um, as well as um, compliant with some of our implementations in Canada where data can't leave the country and things have to be um, you know, uh, kind of siloed. We leverage, uh, there's an API service, I believe it's called Translation API. Um, I don't know the exact company name, but it's, it's an optional service and we built it in mostly for GDPR compliance. Okay, great. One other question here. Does the tool integrate with video? If so, have you done such an implementation with an installation of the OpenMX platform? So it won't integrate with video. Um, and, you know, we, we need to be able to capture the text in order to turn it into audio. Um, you know, ReadSpeaker does have a tool that will turn closed captioning, uh, not closed captioning, will turn like audio descriptions into, into audio if they're written out into the script and then um, bring them into a video. Um, but it, it doesn't integrate with, um, you know, with video files on their own. Okay. So one other question we have here is, which industries do you specialize in, if any? Uh, really, it's it's across the board. You know, then you know we we have uh, customers in every industry. So as I when I started the presentation, I talked about you may have heard a read speaker voice while riding a bus, while going through a train uh, station or an airplane airport. Um, we're also in IVR systems, uh, the new virtual assistants and chatbots. Uh, as I said, Spotify and Sonos. Uh, you know, so really, read speaker. Our text-to-speech solutions, you know, we are our core focus is accessibility and education, but our voices stretch to just about every technology. And the line that I like to say is, you know, we we've made everything talk from exercise bikes uh, to parking meters. And here another question related with, with videos. Would it read a video transcript? If the transcript was posted in the course, yes. So it would be a matter of, you know, having that text available for the ReadSpeaker web reader tool to capture. Um, you know, if it's presented on the screen and the, the simple explanation I could give is if you can click and drag on the, the transcript um, on the screen, then we'd be able to read it because we're doing a similar thing when we look at the HTML code to grab the text to read it, um, you know, that's the key component is, you know, do we have access to the text content? Okay, great. I'm not sure if anyone else has more questions. Yeah, and anyone that's interested, you're welcome to a sandbox. We have pre-written uh, code that, you know, you can drop in and, you know, in just a few minutes, kind of experience and play around with it and test it to see what it reads transcripts. Um, the other thing that I think is important to mention, ReadSpeaker is a global company. You know, we have our core development team uh, in Sweden. Our executive team is spread across the globe. Our support team is spread across the globe. You know, there is a phone number that you can call about 18 hours a day. And, you know, you will get someone that will pick up the phone and say, let's troubleshoot this together. You know, do we have great documentation? Do we have online forums? Absolutely. But also we are focused on service and making sure that your implementation works and supporting your team when they do the implementation. And that is a key piece of, of read speakers business model is the service and getting the text to speech integrated in a way that works for your learners. 